Thank you, Ivory, um, and the American Liver Foundation for this invitation. I'm honored to moderate this session, How Liver Cancer Perspectives from the NCI and engage in conversation with uh, Dr. Tim Gretton. Dr. Gretton is a physician scientist who uses his medical expertise in gastroenterology, hepatology, and medical oncology, along with his research expertise in tumor immunology to develop novel treatments for patients with cancer. He heads a research team to study the tumor uh, microenvironment in the liver in the context of hepatocellular carcinoma, phalangiocarcinoma, and liver metastasis, and also studies how the exogenous factors such as diet uh, and the gut microbiome may affect immune responses uh, in the liver. He also directs the GI medical oncology and clinical team that conducts clinical trials in patients with GI cancers. And he and his team cover the entire research spectrum. Dr. Gretton is also the co-director of NCI Center for Cancer Research for Liver Cancer Prevention uh, the Program. Welcome, Dr. Gretton. Hello, thank you for the invite. Dr. Gretton, you currently, as I mentioned um, in your bio, you serve as co-director of the National Cancer Institute Center for Cancer Research Liver Cancer Program. So I'd like to just begin this conversation by asking you just to provide some, some background on NCI Center for Cancer Research Liver Cancer Program, um, and just touch on its mission, the goals, and some of your accomplishments. Yeah, sure. So basically, <clears throat> so the Center for Cancer Research is part of the NCI, and it's actually um, what we call the intramural program. So we are a regular research institute and um, in Bethesda, we actually have what um, I believe is the world's largest um, research hospital. So we perform clinical trials where we test novel treatment um, options for um, patients with all different types of diseases, um, including patients with cancer and obviously um, liver cancer. And what we're doing in part um, with this liver cancer program is that we have brought together different ex ex um, experts hepatologists, pathologists, interventional radiologists, medical oncologists. And, and the, uh, the mission really is, you know, to, to better understand um, liver cancer biology and use this knowledge um, to develop um, novel treatments. And the way we do this is we, we're trying to not only do this by ourselves with the local colleagues that we have, but we also have multiple um, collaborations with experts um, throughout the United States. So some accomplishments, Dr. Gretton, that you can touch on in a few minutes. So um, basically, you know, for, so what we're trying, to, I think one important thing for, for the listener to understand is if, if you want to do liver cancer research and any type of research, you know, we have to collaborate. And um, you see on the slide um, here, the, the National Cancer Plan, and in order to do this, to prevent cancer, to detect cancer early, to develop treatments, you, you have to do this. And you see everyone has a role. You see the National Cancer Institute, you see academia, academia, industry, NIH institutes, foundations. And, and the idea really is, you know, to bring all these different players together and, and, and utilize their expertise because they all have a specific expertise to what you can see on the slide, which is basically, you know, in the on the bottom, is to engage every person to maximize data utility and then optimize the workforce. Thank you, Dr. Breton. And so just for our audience, just some background. So the National Cancer Plan, as Dr. Breton mentioned, it was released um, earlier this year, I believe in April, and it provides a, a comprehensive framework uh, for meaningful collaboration, as Dr. Breton mentioned, and really helps unite us. And as the vision of, of President Biden and First Lady Dr. Jill Biden that they set out in the cancer moonshot to end cancer as we know it. And so um, it has three elements, and these elements include these eight goals, um, a set of, of strategies associated with each goal, and then, and then a call to action for every organization, and not just the federal government, but for all to um, do their part to, to end cancer. And so the plan is an evolving plan um, as research continues and advances are made and lessons are learned um, throughout the cancer care community. So then, Dr. Graham, can you just shine some light on how the work of your program that you co-direct helps address some of the specific goals here, the eight goals? Um, that are outlined here? Yes. So so basically, you know, what we're trying to do in, in collaboration with many different institutes is, you know, to, for instance, to identify markers that we can find in for early detection, 
you see early detection. You know, we know that we are much better in treating patients with very early disease. We can cure them. We have very good um, uh, uh, treatment rates and, and, and cure rates, actually, in patients that have early disease. So that is certainly, you know, one um, large effort. Um, the second effort um, goes towards developing more effective treatments. Um, we know that um, we, we do have good treatments, and especially in the context of HCC, treatment options have improved significantly in the past five years. But um, still, you know, um, I would say these treatment options that we have are not good enough. And um, as part of this, what we're doing to work um, with, um, with outside investigators, and, and different groups is, you know, also, for instance, to identify biomarkers so that we better understand why potential patients will respond to a potential therapy um, or not, and thereby uh, specifically target patient populations and uh, provide them with the correct treatment. So, Dr. Breton, we know, we know that clinical trials provide uh, a way to explore the most effective means to prevent, to diagnose, and to treat patients. We actually had an earlier presentation um, that touched on this topic. So can you tell us what are some of the, the current clinical trials that you're engaged in, as well as some upcoming clinical trials that you will be engaged in? Yes. So, you know, basically, let me start a little bit broader. You know, the, the field, especially in the context of HEC, has really changed dramatically in the past five years. And there's a lot of interest in immunotherapy, activating the immune system to treat tumors. And there's different ways of doing this. There's different drugs. We use different drug combinations at the NCI, and there's others um, that use others that use other combinations. And and right now we you know we're not aware or we don't understand which is, is the best one. That's the uh, idea of doing these trials. Now, what we can specifically offer at the NCI are so-called adoptive T cell therapies. So these are very I want to say very complex studies where we actually isolate immune cells from the patient genetically engineer them and then reinfuse them into the patient. And the idea is that these tumor cell, these uh, uh, T cells and recognize the tumor and destroy tumor cells. And patients are at times not sure if they should take part in a clinical trial. And so can, how can they get some more information um, on clinical trials at NIH? So, um, you know, actually all clinical trials, including the ones um, at uh, the NIH are, um, available on the clinicaltrials.gov website. So that's www.clinicaltrials.gov. And um, there is actually, uh, which a lot of patients don't know, there's a search engine. You can actually put in your location so you know what is in your specific area. If you were to put in Bethesda, where the NIH is, you will find our studies. And if you put, you know, any other random um, place, you know, you will find the studies which are available um, in your area. And I think with this, you would then want to go to your care team. You just heard this, you know, how important it is, you know, to have a team that discusses this to see whether um, this or that study is useful for a particular patient. So Dr. Breton, coming from a federal institution, are there any resources that you can share with the American Little Foundation's patient community? Yes, so basically, um, so there's there's certain um, resources. So so you already heard in the prior um, talks about the different websites that are available. The NCI has its own website. It's NCI. It's, it's a sorry www.cancer.gov. So it's very easy, cancer.gov, and um, that website provides you with a lot of information about um, the disease, about the treatment, about epidemiology, um, etc. Now, more specifically, if you um, consider treatment and enrolling in a clinical trial, um, we have the, the privilege at the NIH that we can actually treat patients in our clinical trials um, free of charge. This is all paid. All our treatments, all our clinical trials are free to the patients. If the patients are enrolled um, on a clinical trial, we can even cover their um, domestic travel. Um, so I would say there's um, you know, potentially a lot of help um, available, and it's, it's just that they have to contact us. And, and thank you to um, ALF and um, Ivory for, in, for putting in all of those resources into the chat box. So, Dr. Gretton, we want to showcase um, a video to our, a short video to our audience. Um, but before we switch to the video, is there anything that you would like to share? Anything else that you would like to share with the patient community? No, I, I, you know, I think the most important thing is, and I know this has been mentioned before, but I don't think it can be mentioned enough is, you know, that the idea of having a team and the idea of having a second opinion. 
you know, it's it's not, you know, we, we are not proud, you know, it's not that you can't ask somebody else. And, you know, I think only the person who doesn't ask for um, a second opinion or doesn't ask the right question, you know, is, is, is doing a mistake. You know, always ask if you don't understand this, if you want to hear more, if you want to get a second opinion, et cetera. It's important that, you know, you express your concerns or your questions. So I'd like to switch to the video because I do want to um, leave some time for questions from the audience. I actually do not see any questions here. I think we may at this point move on to our next video. Part of the NCI is the Center for Cancer Research, and that is the institute where I am working at. Now here in Bethesda, Maryland, we are located and there is a large research hospital. We're conducting clinical trials here with the aim to test new treatments and to advance the outcome of patients. Now, if we have a patient that we can treat on a clinical trial, we can actually provide a lot of assistance. The treatment is free, travel is free, and there are other benefits that patients may be eligible for. We do clinical trials, and the idea here is really to find new immune-based approaches to patients with early disease, intermediate, late stage disease, and basically, you know, for those patients where there is no other treatment option. Obviously, these trials always change because we only have certain number of patients, but those patients, again, that enroll here are treated. They do not require an insurance. We retreat them like any other cancer patients, and they would be eligible for the benefits that I just mentioned. On top of that, because of our specific interest in this disease, I'm always happy to provide a second opinion, we can certainly provide guidance to these patients.